so this is my current project and I realize that this is a terrible camera angle but this is really the only spot I could fit in my shop and the whole thing's going to be painted so this way I can get all the way around it and I have it leveled out nicely. So what this is, is it's a long desk unit but it has three modular pieces joined by one flat top. So it's a desk that's built separately, um, filing cabinets that are built separately, and then another desk. Now the customer already has a shelving unit that's going to go on top of this whole thing. So it's going to end up being almost a gigantic built-in. But down the line, if they want, they could use the desks and the, the filing cabinets as separate units. So this is probably going to be a three-part series. I'm going to show you how to build the filing cabinet section in the first video, the two desks in the second video, and then the third video will be a lot of the rollover, the top, painting. Um, I don't think I show making drawer fronts and stuff like that in the, in the first part either. But this piece is almost complete. I just have to cut down and edge out the top and these desks are going to get a very skinny drawer still. I'm working on that, but they're not completed yet. So the basic gist of the center unit is that it's a cabinet, so it's going to have two huge drawers, and even the two side desks are, are kind of built like I would paneled cabinets because they're not legs. You, it was hard to tell in the intro, but the sides are panels, they're not, they're not hollow legs. So I start by ripping down my pieces. This piece of furniture has to have very specific measurements, so it can't be any more than 19 inches deep. That center portion is 40 inches wide, and the whole thing's uh, 30 inches off the ground. So I'm just ripping down some nicer grade cabinet veneer ply. This veneer on this is maple. That's what they sell at my, at my local uh, Lowe's. So these are the two side panels. Now I like to make my cabinets with rabbits and dados. I just like the way that they go together um, and they're a little sturdier I find than, than just using butt joints. So the top portion is going to have two rails. So I have a dado stack on my blade and a sacrificial fence on my um, rail fence and I'm just cutting some notches in the top edge. I'm going about four inches deep on each one and the back side I could lower onto the blade. Now this will leave a curve because the blade is circular and you're going to have to chisel it out to get a flat back. Now there's a couple um, not necessarily hard things about this, this piece of furniture but there's some design elements that are a little different than what I usually do and one of them is the front drawer. She doesn't want to see the top rail, she wants the front drawer to meet the top of the table so that is why these two top sections are a little deeper than I usually make them. So then I'm going through and putting a dado on the bottom. I have a three quarter inch stack in there. It's a little less actually because this plywood is never actually three quarters. And then in the center I'm putting another through dado through the whole piece. And basically those are going to be two shelves holding everything together. So I was just making sure I had that right and I could cut through the center on this one as well. To finish this up, I uh, re-put my sacrificial fence on there and I'm cutting some rabbits in the back and that will fit the half inch backer board. I usually don't use half inch backer board, but because um, this cabinet is so wide and it only has one middle shelf, I wanted the backer board to be a little sturdier just to be able to hold it all together as well as hold up those thick drawers. So those are what my two sides look like. So then I went through and made all of my calculations because like I said, the front rail is going to be a little bit different than the back rail and the bottom is going to have a piece of trim. So it's that shelf isn't going to be as thick as the middle shelf, which will go all the way to the front of the piece. So once I had all those measurements, I could go through and um, just start ripping down some more plywood. So the one reason I really like the radial arm saw is you see you could put, rip down really wide pieces of stock on there. So this is ripping down the little, most of them were almost three inch pieces for the top rails. I'm making two of those. One's a little bit thicker than the other one. And I could go through and, make, and cut the two shelves. So you can see that bottom shelf doesn't come all the way to the front because there's going to be a front piece of trim that, that will butt up against that so you don't see that edge joint. 
you can see with these dados everything slides into place nicely and it, it holds itself together and then my middle shelf can go into place and the middle shelf is three quarter inch thicker than the bottom shelf and that comes flush with the front and I'll put edge banding on the front edge of this entire cabinet and then you could see that top rail is recessed because the the front panel of the door is going to cover it the back panel goes all the way to the back so this is just rough cutting the backer board i didn't i usually put these on all at the same time but with this i just kind of used it to hold it in place because i i had to use pipe clamps in order to glue this because it's so wide and i couldn't put the backer on because it was elevated off of off of my table but i did cut the backer at this point then I could put glue in all of the joints and, and um, glue this together. Now a lot of times I'll use screws on the edge of the panels to hold everything together, especially when I'm making built-ins because you'll never see them once they're in place. But like I said in the beginning of the video, the whole point of making this in three pieces is so if they ever wanted to one day, the three pieces can be used separately. So I wanted the side panels to be nice and clean so if this was ever used as a separate piece, there wasn't screws um, in the sides put those rails in place and then I could clamp so I'm using like I said these long pipe clamps and it's elevated off the ground so that's why you'll see I kind of put the backer in place because the black backer helps to to square the entire cabinet while it's drying and then um, before I tighten everything down I make sure the cabinet is is square especially anything that's going to have drawers in it if it's not square you're just going to be fighting it the entire rest of the time so then like I said I could pound that backer into place and then that will make sure it's it's truly square so for the drawer slides I had to get these really heavy duty Accuride slides because my cabinet is wider than um, a certain amount so these are designated for cabinets over I think 32 inches the big difference is there's three quarter inch thick instead of half inch so they're really heavy duty and they're weighted to hold I think 200 pounds so in the directions they tell you you have to subtract an inch and nine sixteenths from your total opening which gives me 70 uh, 37 inches so in order to make these drawers, because they're so heavy, I wanted to use uh, dovetails. The dovetail jig I had wasn't wide enough. So I ended up making this jig in order to cut dovetails um, and pins in the front of my cabinet. Now I made an entire separate video showing how I made this jig and how I cut these dovetails. So I'm going to go through it very quickly in this video just to not get super redundant. But basically you could see with um, a dovetail bit in there, I could cut the the um the joints for this entire thing and then i could swap it out and use a flat bit and then cut all of the pins as well so there are the pins so this is the front of that cabinet and this is plywood so there's a little bit of tear out but i like plywood because it's not going to move around as much on you this would have cost a ton of money to make these in, in solid wood and then I could just clean up those joints and that jig worked really well. Um, it's the video I posted last week if you want to see the entire thing on how I did that. I didn't have the right bits so you could see there's a little bit of cleanup to do with the joints. But they ended up going together really well and these are through dovetails instead of half blind dovetails. So the cabinet itself, the drawer box ended up being really strong which I was quite happy about because it is quite large. So then I'm just adding I put a um, quarter inch bottom in these so I'm just running all of my pieces through with my dado stack putting quarter inch bottom on there. Now I prefer dovetails for my drawer boxes because it just makes it so the front of the, the drawer box can never pull off. Um, I've definitely repaired quite a few drawer boxes that don't have dovetails in the front and over time especially if you overweight your, your drawer boxes that front panel can pop off. So once I have the bottom cut, I could put the three quarter inch dado in the back and that will hold the backer to, to the drawer box. I've made enough of these that I make sure they fit. I take them apart and I can cut all of these joints at once without taking measurements. So then once I have my three sides, I can take measurements 
and, and cut that bottom piece. So you're just adding the thickness of your dados, which mine were, I think, about three-eighths of an inch. So I'm adding that to the inner dimension on the side and the front to the back, and then I'm doubling it for the sides because there's two grooves. This is just that quarter inch backer. You can see it slides nicely into place. Now with that cut, the same width will be for the back because I cut the data the same thickness as the groove for, for the bottom panel. Now before I put the drawers in, I, I finally attached the back. So you can see the back fits in there nice and square. And I just use a chalk line to, to um, line up where my backers are, especially the ones in the middle. It can be sometimes hard to, to judge where it is. So I just line it up and put three chalk lines on there and then I could just sink a ton of screws in the back. And um, having a backer on a cabinet like this really, really shores up the whole piece. So with the cabinet uh, drawer box dry fitted together, I could pop it all apart and glue it in place. The other plus side to the dovetails is, is you really amplify your gluing surface area with all these pins and all of these tails. So the more gluing surface area you have, the stronger the joint's going to be because modern glues are just extremely strong. If you've ever broken one of these joints using Type Bond 3 or any of the Type Bonds, it usually pulls the wood off. The glue joint doesn't break, so it's usually stronger than the wood. And then I can just hammer those pieces into place. I can slide um, my bottom in. I never really glue my bottoms. You technically can, I guess, on plywood carcasses because they're not plywood's not really subjected to seasonal humidity, but I just am in the habit of, of not gluing them in and letting them float. And then I can put the backer in place and um, check this for square. I put a couple brads in the, in the back and then also in the backer going into that back edge just keeps everything aligned once it's once it's all square and then I like to let them dry in their actual boxes so that I know for sure that they fit in there squarely so I'll slide it in the box and I'll slide the slides in as well and then as it sets up I know it's not shifting or moving and it will fit in there so I did have some some minor holes um, in those dovetail joints but you could see that when I put some putty in there they cleaned up quite nicely so to mount these slides it's pretty easy at this point i don't even really read directions for these um, i just had i think it was a three inch shim that i used which got my drawer slides about halfway up my cabinet side so i kept that shim in place and i just put two screws in the side for now i'll add a bunch later but for a mock-up i only put two in put them in the holes that you can move the bracket horizontally back and forth and then as you saw there, I put a little shim on the bottom and then I marked where those slides are going to come off the bottom. I mark them right on the cabinet based off of the sides that are already mounted in there. These are usually set about an eighth inch back from the front. And then once again, I'm just putting two screws in temporarily because sometimes these don't fit and you have to mess with them. So if you have to take a bunch of screws out, it can be a pain. And then I could slide them in and the, the bottom one's already mounted and this one went in. It's a little rough going in with these slides first time, but after that, I was actually pleasantly surpri surprised. Both of them worked really well, which was nice because a lot of times the problem with these wide drawers is there's a lot of slop and side to side movement. And if you don't make your boxes square, um, it can be a huge issue compared to smaller, smaller boxes. So I was happy they worked well. So we, once again, because this, this is so wide, I'm putting a joint on the bottom so that over time my bottom panel doesn't um, flex and bow at the bottom. So this little runner will keep it all square. So to attach it, I'm putting a little dovetail on the front. I just cut this quickly with a handsaw. This is a scrap piece of poplar. I drew out a rough dovetail on it and just, like I said, used a handsaw to cut it all out. I could clean it up with chisel, chisels afterwards. So once I had that dovetail, I could transfer it to the front. I drilled, I drilled, I sawed um, through the center and through the two edges with the same saw. And then I could take my coping saw and cut out that excess and then clean it up with, with a hand saw, a hand saw, a hand chisel. So I could just clean up that joint to my line with a chisel and then that bottom board will fit in place. The clamps are because even though this is plywood, that front was a little bowed just because it's such a long span. So I was hoping with the clamps in place, as I glued this in place and then screwed it to the back, it would help keep that front panel square. And it did work, a, it did work um, to do that. It was still a little bowed, but it didn't really affect the finish 
uh, mock-up. So we could just hammer that in place. 